Hi Guitar Kids, I'm Vivian Campbell and today I'm going to show you some of my solos and some of my techniques. So let's go to the lesson. Hello guitar kids, I'm Vivian Campbell and welcome to my instructional video. To begin with, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself and about the equipment that I use. Uh, let's start with the guitar. This is a Kramer Knight Swan. This is my main stage guitar. Um, some of the key points of this guitar are, to begin with, that it's a small scale body. It's 12.5% smaller than regular Strat style. It's 24 and 3 quarter inch scale from nut to bridge, which is similar to a Les Paul. It has a size one nut, which is the smallest available. Very, very slim neck. The neck is bolt on, as you can see. Uh, it has a double octave fretboard, which is made from Indian ebony. The frets are jumbo, medium jumbo frets. And um, the main characteristic of this guitar is that it's available with a compound radius on the fretboard, meaning that I can have low action and have uh, still be able to bend strings high up the fretboard without fretting out. So the pickup on the guitar here at the back is a full shred. It's made by Seymour Duncan and it's only available on this guitar. It's somewhat similar in output to a Duncan Custom but a little bit hotter and a little more bass response. And in the middle here I have a Duncan Jeff Beck model and in the front I have a Seymour Duncan Telecaster pickup. These are two Similar guitars. This is the original prototype. It was built by a guy called Buddy Blaze from Dallas, Texas. <clears throat> and it's pretty much the same guitar. This is uh, the first of the factory models that will be going to the stores. It's the same as the purple one, except it doesn't have the front pickup in it. Um, now let's talk a little bit about my effects and the amps that I use. The effects system here is uh, a switching system built by Bob Bradshaw in Hollywood. And um, basically I can store 50 combinations of amps and effects in the pedal board and call up any of these combinations at will. Let's look at some of the effects in the rack. I have Yamaha SPX90, Lexicon PCM70, Lexicon PCM41, a Rain SM26 mixer, another SPX90, a Rocktron Exciter Imager, Roland SRV 2000 Digital Reverb, another line mixer, Furman PQ3 Parametric Equalizer, Rocktron Compressor Limiter, Chorus, TC Electronics 2290 Multi Effects, and this is the IVL Pitchwriter Guitar Synthesizer. <clears throat> and in the very bottom and around the back where you can't see, I have two Rocktron 2C Hush units to keep it quiet. In the far rack here are the amps that I use. I have uh, two Randall RG100 preamps, and I run those through a Mesa Boogie Strategy 400 power amp, so I can have clean sounds, and I can have distorted sounds, and I can have affected sounds, and I recall them all through this pedal board on the floor here. This has an on-off control for every amp and every effect, and I can run through the various banks and presets at will, depending on what song I'm at. And that is my equipment. So let's talk a little bit about the techniques involved in playing guitar. The left hand and the right hand. Um, as far as the right hand picking techniques go, I tend to hold the pick fairly lightly and 
I don't pick every note. Some guitar players, such as Aldi Miola or whoever, tend to get into picking every note. In heavy guitar playing, where you have a lot of distortion and a lot of high gain, you tend not to have to do that. So I'll show you a passage where I'll pick every other note or every third note or every fourth note. Or whatever. <laughs> So, as you can see, it's not always necessary to have to pick all the time. Uh, you can play whole passages without picking at all. And um, when I do pick, I try and leave as much space as possible between the pick, let it go freely, and I try and always alternate my picking one stroke down, one stroke up, especially if I'm playing something regimental like a scale. <laughs> Because uh, ultimately when you're playing things fast, you don't want to have to think about your picking technique. And if you're always picking down strokes or you're always picking up strokes, either way you'll find yourself cornered sooner or later in a situation where it's not free flowing. If you double pick up and down, up and down, always alternate, uh, eventually you'll, you'll have a technique that's, that's very free flowing. And um, as far as the left hand goes, I play, like most guitar players, I use all four fingers. Some guitar players, like Michael Schenker, never use their little finger. They always play with the third finger, and that's, I guess, just a habit that, that some players teach themselves, because your little finger is your weakest finger, and it takes a lot of work to be able to use it, but it's, um, it always makes perfect sense to me if you have four fingers to use them, so I'll just show you a little exercise I do to strengthen all four fingers and keep my fingering even. And it's just uh, basically to go through the strings, uh, starting on the low E string. I'm going in, going chromatically, playing G, G sharp, A, A sharp, and then up to C and whatever. Just very, very slowly. <laughs> boring exercise but in the long run it'll work out it teaches you to have a very even approach <clears throat> with every finger and uh, it's also the kind of exercise where you can practice different picking techniques at the same time you can either pick every note or you can pick one in every four as I was doing there um, it's it's something that I would recommend that you do with the metronome like most exercises do it slowly at a pace that's very, very comfortable because if you can't do it slowly, you'll never be able to do it properly at any speed. So get a metronome, get a room, lock yourself in it and get bored and practice. <laughs> to perhaps further demonstrate um, my technique of picking, I'd like to show you something I occasionally employ when I'm playing. When you have a high gain sound, uh, you can get away with doing a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs without having to use a pick too much. So I have a little trick that I picked up from Jimi Hendrix. He didn't show me it, but I picked it up. Um, where I use my right hand to mute the strings, and I just do hammer-ons and pull-offs with my left hand. My right hand isn't doing anything other than muting the strings. Uh, a lot of people come up and ask me, was I actually clamping chords there with my right hand or whatever? 
which I wasn't, but it is possible to use uh, certain fingers on your right hand as capos and just go up the neck that way. Do something like this. I'd like to show you some other little uh, patterns specifically to do with pull-offs. For argument's sake, uh, something like this. That's uh, in the key of E, just using basically a two-finger technique. You can do it on any string. Find the right note in the scale, like uh, A, G, E, E, D, B, on those two strings. Next two strings down, you can have uh, B, A, and G. And F sharp, E, and D. Put them together just like this. Also, uh, while you're doing that, you can use the palm of your hand right here, or your little finger or something to mute, to mute the strings and move up over the harmonics, and it gives you a very uh, harmonic damping effect like this. So now I'd like to play a little piece for you to maybe demonstrate some of the techniques that I've shown you. And this piece is a very slow tempo, DO-esque kind of piece in D minor. Let's take a look now at um, one of the songs I performed with Whitesnake. I'd like to show you the rhythm parts for a song called Give Me All Your Love. And I'll play you a verse, chorus, and solo pattern for this song. Mm -hmm. 